Welcome back. You know, this is the, this is the called, okay, I'm Chris D'Elia. I got to do it like this. I'm Chris D'Elia, and this is Congratulations, the podcast. Um, that's not the title, though. Congratulations, the podcast. It's just Congratulations. And I'm Chris D'Elia, your host. But, you know, uh, it's actually weird to say that you're a host when it's just you, but it's going to be just me. And so it's just kind of my show. Anyway uh hi welcome this is the second episode i think unless this might be the first episode because i did record an episode already and it was very short but i don't know if i was even going to post it up yet i didn't post it up yet so i didn't post this one up yet obviously so who knows what episode this is but my point is this is one of the early episodes and you're listening to congratulations um so yeah hi and also uh uh this is uh this is new to me too. Uh, and this is a podcast about, I call it a congratulations. I'm calling it congratulations because I feel like, um, I don't know, everyone needs a congratulations from now, for now, and uh, every now and then. And you know what? Sometimes in a good way and sometimes in a bad way. I feel like congratulations is good. Like if you're having a baby, oh great, congratulations. Congratulations for just being you and sticking to that and not fucking up. And then also sometimes congratulations because you're a fucking asshole and you're and you don't know it but but to me you know if you got on like some kind of bullshit pants or if you got you know if you're in line and you're like dilly dallying instead of like fuck you congratulations you know you you fucking did it you're you're a big fucking asshole anyway uh that's enough explaining i don't want to explain i don't want to explain things here's the thing about this podcast i don't want to explain things and i also don't want it i don't want you to know too much about me which is horrible for podcasts um but i'm doing it because i want to reach more people and i want people to i, I want people to understand me in a way but not not too much um so yeah, so I was uh, I was in uh, I was in Omaha this week, and uh, I went to Omaha, and I thought, here's the thing: I put on a I put out a Twitter poll saying I wanted to run my hour because I'm about to shoot my new special soon, and I wanted to run my hour just to get the to get the reps in and figure it out. Um, so I asked my agent, you know, set up a place and he said, okay, I'm, uh, I got an offer for Sacramento I, and I also have an offer for Omaha. Which one do you want to do? And I thought for sure, cause I've been to Sacramento before. I thought that people would be excited to go to, if I was going to go to Sacramento because I've been there already. And when you see a live show, you know, you watch stand up on, on, uh, on, uh, on TV, it's not as good as seeing it live. It's just not, uh, no matter, no matter what stand up you're going to see, but when I went to go, I've been to Sacramento a bunch. So I was like, let me put it out on Twitter. Uh, I did a Twitter poll, which I don't normally do those Twitter polls. But I was like, which one should I go to, Sacramento? Or you could vote for Omaha. And I was like, Sacramento is going to win. I'm just going to be able to do this short flight and just get to Sacramento. It'll be, it'll be really easy. And Omaha won so much hands down. And I feel like it's because, I felt like it was because they have nothing to do there. But then I thought about how nobody has anything to do in Sacramento either. Nobody really has anything to do except for in Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, Austin. You know, there are some other spots like Denver thinks it's like that, but it's not. You know what I mean? They just have the Rockies. I, I, I like, here's, a, I'm, I'm going off on, on this because Denver, I, I, I love, I love performing in Denver, but Denver acts. There are some certain, there are some cities that act like when you get there as a guest that they're lucky that that you're lucky to be there and that shit fucking pisses me off and denver's like that denver you get there and they think because they got they did the weed thing first and their air is really fucking nice and they have mountains that you're lucky to be there and i and i and i'm not i'm not saying i'm not lucky to be there but i mean because it's a great place but don't act like you 
don't act like the Rockies have been around since fucking 1940. Do you know what I mean? They were an expansion team in the 90s. And don't act like when I go to a fucking Rockies game, or, which, I, which I'm not doing. I, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. I don't go to sporting events because I don't like to be around a lot of people like that. And number two, I don't give a fuck about anything really that much. But don't, don't, when I get there, don't act like you, you know, that your shit doesn't stink. I don't care. I, it's great. Your place is great. Austin, it's fucking great. But when I get there and you're like, you got to go to some of these places and just hear these like, m- you know, musicians in these small bars. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to get the CD, but also I'm not going to get the CD. So I don't give a fuck doubly. Um, which leads me to another actual problem, which was another reason why I'm doing this podcast, which will never, I'm getting really convoluted here, but already, which is, it's this fifth minute, but I'll get back to the Twitter poll in Omaha, but I don't, I don't want to do, I, I, I don't, when I go to, what am I trying to say here? Okay. This is one of the reasons why I want this podcast. Okay. One time, fuck, this is so hard to explain. Uh, one time when I was at the coffee bean and tea leaf, uh, I had this coffee bean. I used to run this fucking block in studio city when I lived there, dude, I, there was a coffee bean and tea leaf, a 76 station. There was a fucking, uh, salad place. It's not there anymore. There was a bagel shop. It was not there anymore. I mean, I fucking ran this block, dude. It was five stores and it was in studio city. There was a sushi place and the sushi place is still there. But I fucking was there. I was there, dude. I was at this coffee bean every day and I ran this fucking block, dude. I was like, I was like the Tony Soprano of this fucking, of these five store, like little, this block area. There was a 76 station. It's not there anymore now. It's a Wells Fargo. The coffee bean is still there, but it's terrible now. There, it, it's like, it's, it's got more traffic than the, it's like, you get there and you're like, where's the protest? Like, you feel like, what are they protesting? That's, that's what it's like. There's so many fucking people there. And then the, the, the bagel place is now a five guys, which, you know, I love five guys, but when I go to a call, I'm not going to eat five guys at like noon, you know, cause I'm not a piece of shit. And then, um, there is a, uh, there was a salad place, which was awesome, dude. It had the best cop salad ever. And they shut it down, dude. They shut it down. And now there's a fantastic Sam's. And the sushi place is still there, which is pretty good. And the coffee bean, where it's like, you know, they're doing a march every day. It sucks. And then, and then the uh, 76 is a Wells Fargo now. So I don't run that block anymore. I don't even live there anymore. But I was there every day, dude. And I, would, I ran into this guy. You know, when you're at the coffee shop, it was a little bit like Friends. Like, it, was just, it wasn't as cozy and cool as the Central Perk, the coffee shop that they had there. But... Um, it was a coffee bean and tea leaf, but I would, you would go there and you would see the same guy. Now, I'm, I keep to myself. I don't like, you know, but occasionally I like weirdos. Like my friends are always making fun of me because I hate, because they're like, your friends are so fucking weird. And some of them are so fucking boring. But then I say to them, well, who the fuck do you think you are? You're my friend as well. I love weird weirdos. Like I have a really tall, lanky fucking string bean Italian friend. And he's fucking hilarious. And my other friends are like, he's such a fucking, you know, he's so Italian. Like, how do you like identify with him? But I'm like, I don't want somebody I can identify with. I want some fucking asshole that I can like joke around with and make fun of and have him make fun of me back. Anyway, so I met this guy there that was a stunt man. And I guess he was a stunt man. I don't even know, really. He looked like a stunt man, to be honest. He had like, he was really stocky and fit and he had thick eyebrows. And, uh, and he had a high high pitched voice, and he, he he was a stunt man, I think. But anyway, he would he would read these books. Now, if you're a, I read books, I read some books, I do. Uh, I read certain authors that I like, and like journalism and shit. I don't read like you know. I mean, I read that fucking what was that Tom Hanks movie they made? If a book is huge, um. Not Angels and Demons, but the other one, the Da Vinci Code. I read that, and that was good, you know, for like a fucking quick, like crazy read on an airplane. But uh, this guy would read books. He'd come to the coffee shop every day and read books. And uh, there were books I don't give a fuck about at at all. Uh, But we would talk and we would, you know, get to know each other. 
And uh, we talk about stunts. I think he did. I don't even remember. I think it was a stunt. If he wasn't a stunt man, he's a stunt man now. I don't give a fuck. Like that's just what he is to the story. And uh, occasionally, a girl would walk in, and he'd be like, "Wow, that girl's really hot, huh?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, cool. You know, whatever, whatever the fuck. You know, regular guy banter, Lo- locker room talk, but not the fucking Trump kind." So, uh, so one day he says to me. And I, I, this is like years we would see each other. Like years. I'm telling you, I ran the block. Dude, I ran the block so hard once, I swear to God, this isn't even a joke. Uh, James Gandolfini came in once to the coffee bean, and there was like tension. And I'm not even fucking around. I mean, I'm joking about how the tension was there. But he came in once, and I was there already. And when he walked in, because I made the Tony Soprano reference, I was like, oh, dude, how fucking cool is it that Tony Soprano is here, but I run this block. But he he he... He didn't know it, but like I imagined he knew it. So, so he got in and he didn't even sit down. He got his coffee and he walked out. Tony or uh, James Gandolfini. So disrespectful, by the way, to call him Tony Soprano. Like he is not a real person, but uh, one of the best shows ever. Great actor. Anyway, uh, rest in peace. Right, that's what people say. But it's so sad he went too soon. But anyway, so this guy's reading a fucking book, and. And he says, you know, you really got to read this book to me. He says, you really got to read this book. And I say, look, I know this guy for years now. I say, what's the book? And he says, it's a book on religion and about how, and I tuned out, done, not only with the fucking book and this talk, done, done with this guy, dude. And you might be like, well, that's a little harsh, but it's not, dude. I've known this guy for two years. This guy knows me. This guy knows me better than a lot of my friends. This guy knows me better than some of my family members, not immediate family, but like I have a cousin, Butch, you know? And like for him to be like, I don't know you enough after these two years we spent every single day together that you wouldn't literally use pages of this book to wipe your asshole after you took a shit. I don't know you well enough to where if there was no, if there was, if there was toilet paper in the bathroom and it was too far and this book was close enough, you might actually use pages of this book to wipe your ass after you took a shit. But I'm going to take this book and I'm going to fucking recommend it to you, even though I know you and you're not going to not only read this book, but if you did, because Here's the other thing. It's like, well, maybe he wants you to learn a little bit about, and it's okay because you're fine. But then he doesn't know me well enough to know that if I read that book, I wouldn't fucking hate that book. That's so fucking disrespectful to, to, to know somebody and be like, hey, read this. Dude, if I fucking all of a sudden say, if I all of a sudden say to my friend, dude, you got to read this book about how they make planes. And my buddy is like this guy who doesn't ever give a fuck about planes and doesn't like planes, then I'm an asshole. I'm a complete piece of shit. So, so that was it. I didn't read the book. And then I was like, oh, that was kind of honestly, that was how the block fell in my head, in my mind. That was how I fucking was like, dude, this is changing. And then ever, and then since then, the 76 station became the Wells Fargo, the bagel place became the five guys and the salad place went out of business. And I'm not fucking around. And I'm not saying that that's why but I'm just saying it's a little bit fucking, as Tony Sabrina would say, ironical. Um, so yeah, so, so I don't even know how the fuck I got, but that's how this is going to be though. I don't even give it, I don't know how I got, I'll get back to the Twitter poll, but that's how this is going to be. I don't know. I went off on a tangent. I have no idea how to get back, but I'm not sorry about it. And, and so, so I put up this Twitter poll, um, and, uh, I said, look, you know, I'm going to go to Sacramento or I'm going to go to Omaha. And, uh, and they were like, and I was like, whichever gets the most votes, I'll go. And they were like, okay. And Omaha just won hands down. So now I'm like, fuck, I got to go to Omaha. I got to take this long flight, which wasn't that long. Actually, I thought it was going to be like four hours. It was like two and a half. So like, I got to go to Omaha and I got to be like, there's nothing to do here. And it's so cold, but that's what Sacramento is like. Nothing. To, there's nothing to do there. At least it wasn't in the summertime in Sacramento. Honestly, I went to fucking Sacramento in like August once. And I swear to God, 
I swear to God, it was so hot that when I when I went, dude, you it was it's the kind of hot where like you would leave to go to Starbucks and you'd come back and then you go to put you'd like put your like because you're wearing like a short sleeve shirt or a tank top because you're in Sacramento and you'd 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 wear you'd you'd lean up against the um, seat belt and it would be scorching lava and you you were you it was so hot where you like the belt would get so hot that you literally don't even know what's happening you're not like you know there's a the kind of hot where you're like where it's like so hot where you're like oh shit that's hot but then there's the kind of hot where you're like oh i'm getting abducted right now like what's happening that's the kind of fucking hot that seatbelt gets in sacramento and it was so hot i used to do this joke on stage when i was in sacramento <laughs> i wish i'm remembering now about how it was so hot that when I would go to Starbucks, I would come back and it was like a fucking sauna. Like there was, I would look in the back seat and there would be an Asian guy with a towel on. Like an old Asian guy would be like, why? And he'd be like, why are you in my sauna? <laughs> That's so stupid. But, um, but yeah, but, but, and you know, and then one guy was like, tweeted me afterwards. He's like, That's racist. And I'm like, nah, old Asian dudes love fucking saunas. You know, that's just kind of how it is. Almost as much as like white chicks. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I put out this poll and then fucking Omaha won hands down. And I'm like, I got to go to Omaha. And so I fucking got to Omaha and it was, it was, it was, uh, my travel agent was like, I got you in the, the best kind of version of the hotel that they have. And I stayed at this fucking hotel and it was good. It had a gym which the heat was on because they were like, oh, it's so cold. We got to put the heat on. And the heat was on the gym. It was so fucking, that was a sauna. But anyway, it was beautiful there. It was beautiful. And I don't mean like it wasn't Yosemite. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't that kind of beautiful. But it was, it had, it was like real crisp air. And, you know, I come, I'm, I'm in LA, so there's smog everywhere and traffic. But it was awesome. The Ubers would pick you up and have conversations with you. Um, and they were nice and polite. You, you, I forget because I live, you know, a lot of you guys probably are listening to this in, in places like Omaha, but I live in LA and New York and uh, yeah, I go to New York a lot and I go to like these big cities and to play, I play these big cities a lot. People are like, well, and, and I should say though, only it's mostly LA though, not even New York. People think of New York as like people are, are assholes, but they're not though, dude. They have this front like they're like that, but they're not. In LA, people are fucking legit assholes. And you gotta you gotta catch yourself sometimes because sometimes you're you know I'm one. But uh, so I went to Omaha and it was it was it was great man the crowds were awesome. I played the Omaha Funny Bone it was great. The the owner there or, or, or um, was so nice, and uh, the staff there was great and the crowds were awesome. Uh, and I had a great time on stage and I ran the hour and I'm, you know, I've been ready to shoot it, but it feels good to, to be able to shoot it, uh, to, you know, to run the, run the set and do it. I thought I got this new little bit I'm doing here and, uh, and I added it to it. So, you know, I don't know when an hour's done, but, uh, you got to figure, um, you got to figure, um, uh, you know, it's done when you're. I wanted to shoot it last year, but my agents were like, hold off, tour with it a little bit. So now it's, it is way better now. Uh, but then you got these guys like Bill Burr that do an hour every four months and Louis CK and, 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 and Jeff, uh, and, uh, Jim Jeffries said to me the other day, he was like, not the other day, I guess it was a while ago, but he was like, you got to do one every, every hour, every hour, every year, man. That's what the greats do. And I was like, yeah, fuck, maybe I do. But then I was like, eh. Then my agent was like, how many specials do you want to do in your life? And I was like, fuck, that's a good point. What do I want to have? I mean, I'm, I'm youngish. You know what I mean? Well, I'm going to do one every year. I'm going to have 57 specials by the time I die. Then they're not really that special, you know? I'm not saying that people who do that, specials aren't special. I think that obviously Louis C.K. and Bill Burr, you know, and Jim Jeffries, they all got great special specials. But I can't imagine doing that many and then thinking that mine were that special. So anyway... Anyway, I'm on like the two. I'm on like a year and a half, two year plan. Maybe I'll maybe I'll wait a little longer to do my next one. But also, the second you put out your special, like when I had Incorrigible come out, the day later people were like, "We need more. When's the next one?" And it's like, at least let me fucking be happy about this. And and uh, 
and like take in the the tweets and like the time that I'm uh that I get to like it came out and I'm let me be proud of it a little bit is what I'm saying. But uh but yeah, so uh, anyway, it's ready. I'm shooting it I'm shooting it in Vancouver. I was going to shoot it in Atlanta because uh I love shooting in Atlanta. Or I'm sorry, I love performing in Atlanta. And um and I love I love uh I love performing in Atlanta. And every time I was going to Atlanta, every time I would I would say to people I was going to shoot in Atlanta, other comedians were like, "Really?" And I was like, "Yeah, why?" And they were like, oh, I don't know. It just surprised me that you would shoot in Atlanta. And I think, I think that's racist. Not, not actually fucking, I don't think you're a racist really, I guess, when you say that. But when you say that, I think what they're thinking is, you're a white guy though. Which, which is stupid because when I go to perform in Atlanta, mostly the audiences, the more audiences are, are mixed. It's not, I think, I think people think of Atlanta as like only black people and it's not, it's like this fucking city that has everybody in it. Um, and I love that about, about cities, about performing in cities because you get to fucking perform for a, whatever, a melting pot. I always think it's corny when people say that, but like you get to, you know, when you go out, dude, I used to play La Jolla all the time and I hated it because it was legitimately only white people and it was annoying they were all wearing like button downs and shorts and sandals and i wanted to kick every one of them in the face um because don't be so white like that you know what i mean don't be so how about this and i tried to do this on stage once and it came off kind of racist but don't be look if you're too much that way Look, if you're a fucking fat guy, that's fine. Be fat, be proud of being fat. But if you're this fat guy that's like, num num, I always want to eat, num num num, you know, or like, or like always looking at donuts and you're like, ma, that looks good. The fuck, like that's so annoying. That's so annoying that you're that much that guy. And I know that that sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like this, like. I don't know, what would it be like a dictator where I'm like, nah, we all have to conform this certain way. But I don't really mean that, you know. But if you're like a frat guy and you wear bandanas around your fucking head and like you say stuff like, oh, classic, you're a fucking asshole. I don't I, like you got to. Here's the deal. You're not maybe not an asshole. Maybe you're a good guy. Maybe you give to charity and shit like that. But prove to me you're not an asshole. That's the thought I have. So if you're this, you know, guy who, who is, you know, in La Jolla and a white guy and you've got this button down and the cargo shorts and the sandals, prove to me you're not an asshole. And that's the thing. If you, I like multinational, multicultural, multicolored fucking people in my audience because it's more fun. Because then I know I can reach uh, 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 more more types of people. So I stopped doing La Jolla because of that. Um, now that being said, La Jolla is gorgeous and it's awesome. But uh, but yeah, uh, I'm so I'm alienating all these fucking cities here. I literally said fuck Denver, fuck La Jolla, fuck Austin. <laughs> I don't mean fuck all these places. You know what I'm talking about. Here's the thing. You know what I'm fucking talking about? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're probably the problem. Yeah, let's go to, uh, you know, Seattle and grow a beard and and have shorter hair on the top of my head than my, my face beard and wear flannel only and say fuck Starbucks. Do you know what I'm talking about? Prove to me you're not an asshole if you're that way. Um, so, so yeah, I, I don't even remember what the fuck I was talking about. But um, what was I talking about, dude? Do you even know? This is my producer. But uh, I'm, uh, he has no idea. <laughs> um, I was talking about uh, La Jolla. And uh, anyway, this is how it is. I should call this fucking podcast Off Track. Um. That's probably a better name. Maybe I'll switch it. This is only the second episode. Um, so, uh, 
Yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't know what I was talking about. But not fuck Denver. You know what I'm talking about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're part of the problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking about a fat guy, but being that. But yeah, but that was already, I was already in the, I was already off track at that point. Anyway, uh, I don't remember. I guess this is when my, this is when I, if, if I were my cousin, I would say, welcome to my world. My cousin, when he was a kid, he would say, welcome to my world all the time. And we would fucking laugh so hard. And he had this voice when he was a kid where he would like talk like this. And he would like talk like this. And my, my brother and I would laugh every time. He'd be like, welcome to my world. Like, it's so funny for like a 14 year old to say that. What's your world? Welcome to my world. What do you mean? Like, with the, you're, like what's your world? You have a tutor. You know? Um, so, yeah. But already this is 25 minutes in and I literally don't know what the fuck. Uh... By the way, I have this fucking, this is another thing too. I have a, my, my British friend just texted me. And uh, this is how, th this is how, this is the, this is actually, and I always talk to him because he'll, it's so British to fucking email somebody instead of text them. Like that's, that's the thing. Like he's actually that British as I was talking about like, you, like there are so white guys in La Jolla, like he'll fucking email me a picture and I'm like, bro, what's wrong with fucking SMS or multimedia or the M MMS, whatever the fuck it's called, the text message. I guess that would be multimedia shit. But so I never know if he's in Britain or he was a guy on Undateable, um, David Finn, great actor, hilarious, good guy, love him. But he'll be like, he'll, he, I'll be like, yeah, send me that picture. And then I'll be like, you didn't send me that picture. And I'll be like, check your email. And I'll check my email and it'll be, it'll be, the picture will be there. And I'll be like, why didn't you fucking text me? And I'll be like, ah, because I'm British. Um, but uh, he texts, and so he texts me, uh, too good for shitting dogs now. Too good for shitting dogs now, bro. And that's on Friday. I don't know what that fucking means. So literally 40 minutes later, I got the text and I texted him back. What bro? Friday goes by. No, no, no. Friday didn't go by. Then five hours later, I text him back in all caps. Oh, cool. Because he didn't text me back. You get an old cool from me. Fuck that. If you didn't text somebody back in five hours and it's the daytime. So then I text him back five hours later, oh, cool. And then the next day, 20 hours later now we're talking about, he writes, tagged you in something on IG yesterday. Nice that you thought about it in the four hours between your two texts, though. So doesn't explain it, which makes me, which actually makes me furious, too. Because explain it, dude. What do you got to do that you can't just fucking explain it? Okay. So then I don't write back because I'm like angry, like friend angry, not like angry, angry. And then, then he just texts me now a day later. <laughs> Only just saw this message. Didn't send the other day with and pointing above it. And it did come through where like, and all of the text messages are green. Oh, so British, dude. I don't know where he is. He's in, he's in Great Britain for sure. No, he said he was in town too. I don't know, but this is the most British shit ever. Like, to, to take three days for this to have a conversation in a text. Only just saw this message. Didn't send the other day. Oh, got it. First of all, got it. Also, didn't make sense. And don't explain how you thought I didn't get the fucking message. Explain the goddamn message. Too good for shitting dogs now, bro? He says, dude. Also, expect that I would get that. Now, this sounds pompous, but I have so many fucking... I have seven over 700,000 followers on Instagram. This guy tags me in something rather than text. That's also so British. T send me the fucking thing, dude, on text. Anyway, 
so that's that's uh so i don't know what he means and i'm gonna ask him again when i see him which who knows i did undateable with him that's a, when you do a, a show with somebody like he's he's like one of my favorite people and when you do a show with somebody you talk to them every day and then the show gets canceled and like you literally never hear from them ever again and it's it's kind of sad i guess if you thought about it i don't think about it that much which makes it even more sad but like you don't if you're not a comedian you're not in my life which is so sad because I see them all the time at the comedy store, the improv, the laugh factory, whatever. But like, I don't like, like what, it, like, uh, you know, Kiefer Sutherland hasn't talked to that guy, Dennis Haysbert in fucking 12 years or whenever 24 was on. And Kiefer Sutherland sees those all state commercials. And he's like, I remember him. Oh, he was a good guy. And Dennis Haysbrook sees whatever the fuck uh, designated survivor. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, I remember him. You know, <laughs> those two guys have the most voices voices. And they were on the same show and they have fond memories of each other. But they literally haven't seen each other since Dennis Haysbrook was assassinated in season four in fucking 24 or whatever it was. And, 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 and Kiefer Sutherland, Sutherland was like, we'll have to get that coffee in a week, you know? And Dennis Haysburg was like, I'll be free. I'm wide open because he literally doesn't have it. Didn't, wasn't on the show anymore. And, and they had plans to go get coffee at like 4 PM in Brentwood, you know? Because that's for sure 100% where Dennis Haysburg lived. There's, if Dennis Haysburg doesn't live in Brentwood, I'll fucking jump off that fucking suicide bridge in Pasadena. There's no, I don't know that for sure, but where do, actually Google where he lives, will you? This is something my producer can do. Google where Dennis Haysburg has a house, but don't say the address. Um, but there's no way he doesn't live in Brentwood. Um, and then never saw him again. They never, literally hasn't seen him again, ever. Maybe they saw him once at like the SAG Awards or something. But like saw them from afar and like was like, hey, how you doing? And he was like, good. It's been really good. And that's it. I'm sorry. Malibu. Malibu. So, I mean, same thing. Like Malibu and Brentwood is so far. It, it's, it's such a like, I live in LA, but I don't live in LA kind of a vibe thing. That It's like the same thing. If you live in, there's nothing more LA. There's nothing more LA than living in Brentwood except for living in Malibu. The only place more LA it is to live in Malibu is Paris. I heard Johnny Depp lived in Paris. I heard Johnny Depp, not, he didn't have a place in Paris. I heard his home was in Paris and I almost ate my own dick. That's how LA it is. I was like, oh, of course Johnny Depp lives in Paris because he's the most Hollywood guy there is. And I know people who know Johnny Depp a hundred percent would say to me right now, oh, you don't know Johnny Depp though. And he's actually not LA. In which I would respond, he wears two hats at the same time sometime. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, I actually know Johnny Depp. He's not Los Angeles. In which I would respond, he's got 47 skull rings. You know? He wears a tent, though. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so you don't get to say he's not Hollywood because here's who knows if somebody's Hollywood or not. Somebody who just kind of pays attention to somebody. If you're a friend of somebody, there are people who would say I'm Hollywood for sure. My friends would be like, no, he's not Hollywood. But, but dude, it, it's not up to your friends to tell you that. It's up to the people who kind of know you and see you in magazines. I'm not in magazines. I'm talking about Johnny Depp. So that's the most, when I heard Johnny Depp lives in Paris, I, cause actually, you know what? That's actually where this came from. One time I was thinking, I was talking to my uncle and he said, I said, yeah, Johnny Depp it must be so Hollywood. And he said, oh no, you know, he lives in Paris. And I said, that's it. That's it. That's the most, that's the most Hollywood shit ever is to live in Paris, not have a home there, but to live. And I'm sure he's got a home in LA too. I'm sure it's in Malibu, but, um, but yeah. So that's, that's the most LA place to live is Paris. I think John Malkovich lives there too. So that's like, there you go. By the way, 
Johnny Depp and John, and John Malkovich, great at what they do. I'm not knocking on them. So fuck you with that shit when you, you know, because I know that shit's coming my way with the seven listeners I have so far. But um, yeah, they're great. They're great at what they do. They're two of the top notch motherfuckers. Johnny Depp, John Malkovich, both great at being actors. Johnny Depp, also great at being yeah, so Hollywood. Um, so yeah, so that's what's up. Uh, again, I got off track. But yeah, so anyway, oh, so that's what I was trying to say. I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I literally haven't seen David since we, the season finale of Undateable, season three. Which, by the way, we did three seasons in five days. People were like, oh, it was on for that long? Um, but it was not, kind of. But it was three seasons, but NBC did it in like two years. So it didn't seem it. It seemed like it. NBC, NBC will do this thing where it's like, season three, four months later. And you're like, okay. And I don't think audience members kind of n- catch up to that. Um, but whatever. Ron Funches was on that show. He's got that new show called Powerless on NBC, which you should check out. Um, great cast, great guys on that. Um, but yeah, so uh, so so that's. God, it, it really is so Hollywood, though. Like, if I got a place in Omaha, that would be so fucking Hollywood. You know what? If I got a place in Omaha, if I lived in Omaha and not L.A., I feel like I would probably get more work because people would be like, oh, did you know he lives in Omaha? And people would be like, what? Really? You think he's available for John Wick 3 to play the bad guy? And then people would be like, oh, it'd be kind of cool because he kind of looks like a... Um, kind of Reeves if he didn't if he didn't sleep that much <laughs> um, I, I would love to fucking by the way two of the top people I would love to do movies with um, who I actually think are great actors Keanu Reeves and Nicolas Cage Nicolas Cage has the career that is the best career and I heard Sean Penn I was reading about Sean Penn talking shit about how Nicolas Cage used to be an actor. And then I heard Nicolas Cage said, like, so many people talk shit. It's tough when your friends talk shit or something. Maybe I made that up. Maybe I made that whole thing up. But I think it happened because I think I remember reading it. Fuck that, dude. Nicolas Cage did the movie where he, like, did it. He did Leaving Las Vegas and then was like, I'm going to do movies where I get to drive into buildings in my in cars or drive out of buildings in my car and just like he broke so many fucking windows in all these movies and fucking had to how many movies has johnny depp done or i'm sorry not johnny depp how many movies has nicholas cage done where he has to talk to a guy from the underworld that's not the fucking devil but a henchman for the devil nicholas cage has done since leaving las vegas nicholas cage has done 14 movies where he's had to talk to a, a devil's henchman. And those 14 movies are my favorite movies. And those are the movies I want to do after I do the crazy fucking... I want to get to a point where no bullshit, I want to play an Asian man in a drama with no makeup. And I want to do it and I want to win a fucking SAG award for it. Because I want them to be like, did you see that fucking... Did you see Chris D'Elia? But they'll fuck my name up because I'm not going to be that famous. They'll be like, did you see Chris D'Elia or Chris Delilah did the, um, did that movie? And he'd be like, what is it? What is it? What, what movie? And they'd be like, he, he plays a, a, a Japanese guy. And he'd be like, really? Is it funny? And they'll be like, no, no, it's not a comedy. And they'll be like, what do you mean? It's not a comedy. And they'll be like, it's a, it's a drama about a Japanese guy. He plays a Japanese guy who like lost his daughter. And you're like, well, well, then it's funnier than it would even be if it was a comedy. You'd be like, dude, that's what I thought, but you've got to see it. And then people will go see it and they'll be like, whoa, he's, it's weird. Like he's like Japanese in the movie, but he's not wearing makeup, but he's good. That's my goal to play a, when I'm like 45 or 46, to play a, a Japanese guy. You know, I don't know where it would be. Maybe it would be like. I don't know what, what where where it would take place. I want somebody to write it, but uh, but I want to develop it with them. But then and then to be a drama and to where I like do like 
I have like maybe one scene where my, my, it's not overboard where I'm like crying so hard, but like there's one scene where I'm like, I'm welling up and, and, and I'm, but I'm, and I'm, you know, you kind of forget that I'm playing like this Japanese guy, but like, you'll also kind of like, it's in the back of your head still a little bit. And then I win a SAG award for it and I almost win an Oscar, but I get beat by like, you know, I get beat by like, uh, uh, jo- Jordan Joseph Levitt, jo- Joseph Gordon Levitt. What the fuck? And, uh, because he come finally wins his shit after doing all those fucking movies that he did. We play like man on a wire or whatever that movie was the walk. But, but, and then like, and then Snowden, and then he had his fucking movies where it was like, this is the movie he's always wanted to make. And he wins. And he's like, he's probably, I guess he's probably my age. So he's 46 and he won. He beat me. And people are like, there are people that are like pissed off because like Chris, Chris D'Elia deserved it, you know, because he played a Japanese guy without being in, and, and the Japanese community, community is like, he deserves it because he played us without being like overly, you know, stereotypical and. But then also some people do think it's racist, but you know, because you always got those people, but all those people are white people that live in fucking La Jolla because it's those people that get pissed off, not the actual people that should get pissed off. And then after that movie, straight up, I do 15 movies where the bad guy is a henchman to the devil in the underworld. That's. That's my goal. No bullshit. That's my goal. And they're all action movies. I drive out of fucking buildings with cars. And the bad guy is always, you know, the character is the henchman of the devil. But the 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 hench the actual bad guy is always like, you know, some foreign guy that's like, you know, has like a series on NBC or, or ABC. But like he was like a and it's like kind of watched, but not really. But he's always got a big he's got like a big following in like Germany. The fuck am I talking about? I don't know. But anyway, that's what it is. But so I, I think I'm going to wrap this up, dude. It's been 41 minutes. You know, we'll grow as you guys grow. Um, but yeah, so that's what we learned. Omaha is a great place to visit for three days. Um, I had a great time there. The audiences are awesome. Thank you, Omaha. We learned that uh, actors don't keep in touch. And I guess it's a shame. Uh, I would like Kiefer Sutherland to reach out to Dennis Haysberg and see how he's doing. Kind of catch up and go get that coffee that they were talking about that you know they were talking about. You guys can meet in Brentwood. How's that? Because you know Keith, Kiefer Sutherland at least lives in Brentwood. Um, and uh, we learned that Johnny Depp is so Hollywood for living in Paris. And that's the most Hollywood place to live. And somebody write me my... Uh, Japanese movie, my drama, but you got 10 years, you got 11 years to make it before I'm 50. You got 15 years. So, uh, thanks. This has been uh, episode, whichever of, uh, congratulations. Uh, and, uh, you can tweet me questions by using the hashtag congratulations pod. And, uh, I'll address them if they're not fucking idiot questions, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening. And, oh, uh, you can check me out on tour, crystalia.com. And I'm going to all sorts of different cities. I'm, I'm adding all sorts of cities. I got a rally city. I'm doing rally in, uh, I never know if that's in North Carolina or South Carolina. It's in North Carolina. And then, uh, I'm doing Australia too. Going to Australia. And then I'm going to uh, wherever. Tempe, Arizona or something. But yeah, look at it and then follow me on all that shit. Instagram, Twitter. It's just Chris D'Elia. And uh, have a good one. All right, thanks. Bye, guys. Congratulations. What do I hit, this fucking red thing? Congratulations. Congratulations, motherfucker. Congratulations, motherfucker. Motherfucker, 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 motherf